Hello, my name is Rosie Brow and I'm an air quality professional at GHD. I will be presenting the air quality study undertaken for the Strategic, Regional, Environmental and Baseline Assessment, or SHREBA, for the Beedaloo Subbasin. There are six domains that comprise this SHREBA being undertaken by the Northern Territory Government. Air quality is included in the scope of works for the environmental health domain. The rationale behind an assessment of air quality in the Beedaloo Subbasin is to understand the current air quality values in the region as a baseline against which changes related to unconventional onshore gas industry developments can be assessed, with particular focus on the impacts of changes in air quality on human health and well-being, as well as amenity. Air quality is a measure of how clean or polluted the air is. Air pollution affects human health as well as the health of the environment. Human health impacts from poor air quality can include allergies and asthma, lung and respiratory diseases, heart disease, and some types of cancer. Amenity is also impacted by air quality, and amenity impacts can include odour, visibility, and dustiness. Emissions to air in Australia are regulated by the National Environmental Protection Measure for Ambient Air Quality, also referred to as the Air NEPM. The Air NEPM sets universal national standards for pollutants to ambient air quality and outlines the framework for state and territory jurisdictions to monitor and report against these standards. The Air NEPM also sets out the process to be followed in measuring the concentration of pollutants in the air to determine whether the standards are being met or the extent of the difference between the measured concentration of pollutants in the air and the standards. The main pollutants from unconventional onshore gas projects are dust from construction activities and gaseous emissions from on-site equipment and machinery. These align with the criteria pollutants defined in the air NEPM. The main source of emissions from unconventional onshore gas developments are air pollutants present in produced gas and liquids that are intentionally or unintentionally released from gas infrastructure, dust from construction activities and wheel generated dust from movements of vehicles and equipment, air pollutants from the transport, handling, use and disposal of chemicals used in well developments, production and processing activities, and fuel combustion, which can include flaring of gas at well pads and processing facilities, gas powered engines used in production and processing infrastructure, and diesel powered vehicles, equipment and plant used in well development and operations. Air quality monitoring in the Northern Territory was developed based on the results of a pilot study of air quality in Darwin undertaken by the CSIRO in 2000 and 2001. Based on the results of the study, the Northern Territory Government has conducted particulate monitoring in the Darwin region since 2004. This is expanded in late 2010 to include air quality monitoring near Palmerston. Additional stations were installed at Winelli in 2012, Stokes Hill in 2017, and Catherine in 2020. In general, the primary pollutant in Darwin and Palmerston is particulates, both PM2.5 and PM10, found in smoke from distant and local vegetation burning during the dry season. Monitoring indicates that other pollutants, such as nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide, all occur at very low levels compared to large cities in other parts of Australia, while ozone occurs at moderate levels typically due to natural processes. Summaries of observations from these stations, including assessment against the NEPM standards, are provided in annual reports prepared by the Northern Territory EPA. These reports have been reviewed and the following trends were observed. The maximum daily average PM10 and PM2.5 concentrations regularly exceed the NEPM standards. The peak concentrations for each year are within the dry season and the concentrations during the wet season are re significantly reduced. Nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide levels were below the air NEPM standards for both peak one hour and annual average concentrations across all stations throughout the monitoring period. Carbon monoxide levels were below the air NEPM standards for all stations throughout the monitoring period with the exception of one exceedance at Winelli in 2018. Ozone levels were below the air NEPM standards for the peak 8-hour concentrations 
across all stations throughout the monitoring period, except for at Palmerston and at Stokes Hill in 2018. Air quality monitoring in the Northern Territory is concentrated around the most populated areas in Darwin, Palmerston and most recently Catherine. No long-term monitoring has been conducted within the Beedaloo Subbasin study area. Concentrations of particulate matter in Darwin are mainly due to the burning of vegetation and associated smoke during the dry season. The frequency of fires in the last 10 years across the Darwin region and the study area is shown in the figure on the right. This shows that fires were much more frequent at current monitoring locations than within the study area. Whilst this might suggest a potential reduction in baseline particulate matter concentrations in the study area, due to the regional setting, fires might occur closer to population centres leading to elevated impacts. The figure on the left shows climate classifications for the current monitoring locations as well as the study area. The comparative more arid setting of the Shreba study area is likely to contribute additional ambient dust concentrations associated with wind-blown dust. The objective of our study is to establish a baseline for the air quality in the Shreba biophysical study area and determine suitable air quality monitoring methods for a regional monitoring framework. There are five air quality monitoring stations currently set up across the study area in locations with potential human health impacts. These are shown in this figure. At each of the monitoring stations, deposited dust, suspended particulate matter, gases and meteorological parameters are being monitored. These pollutants have been selected based on the expected emissions from onshore gas development in the area. This image shows the setup of one station at Elliot. Deposited dust is measured using a dust deposition gauge and allows the measurement of an area's dustiness. Dust deposition will be monitored in accordance with the Australian standards and a sampling period of approximately one month. Monitoring of suspended particulates is continuous with measurements using a light scattering particle sensor. These monitors were chosen for their low power demand and small maintenance requirements. Sampling of gases is undertaken using passive sampling method using diffusive samplers. The sampling period for gases is also approximately one month. Results from the initial round of dust deposition monitoring show that the dust deposition rates are below the adopted standard of four grams per meter squared per month at all sites, with the maximum observed concentration at Balwadi Conservation Reserve. Similarly, the initial two rounds of sampling show that concentrations are below the standards for all gases at all sites. This figure shows the time series data for PM10 at all sites for the first two months of monitoring. Consistently low levels were observed at Bulwadi and Elliot, while remaining three sites tend to experience some high peaks. Some exceedances of the daily criteria occurred during the initial monitoring period likely due to a fires that occurred at Mataranka and Manbalu sites during late October and early November. This figure shows the same time series data for PM2.5, with data not available for Mataranka at this stage. However, equipment has now been set up. Similar to the PM10 observations, low levels were observed at Balwadi and Elliot, while remaining sites experience some high peaks. These polar frequency plots show the mean contribution of PM10 for each wind direction and allow the worst case direction for dust contribution to be identified. For example, at Manbalu, high PM concentrations occur during northwesterlies, while at Mataranka, there are a high range of wind directions for which high PM10 concentrations were observed. At this early stage in the monitoring period, it is recommended that the monitoring continue beyond the scheduled 12 month period. This would reduce the influence of poor air quality events, such as fires, on the results. If this should occur, further validation and refinement of the monitoring techniques should be undertaken. <laughs>